Hey, what's up guys, it's Matt with Movement System. In this video, we're gonna talk about velocity-based training. What you'll notice in this clip is that Tyreek Hill is not just moving heavy weight, he's moving heavy weight quickly. We're gonna look very closely at this clip of him doing a leg press, and then also this second clip of him doing a bench press exercise. If we pause this video and then we zoom in to actually look on the side of the bar, what you'll notice is there's a little sleeve and a rope or a string attached to this bar. What this is doing is it's tracking his bar speed or the velocity of the barbell as he's doing his lifts. This is a technique called velocity-based training and that's what we're gonna talk about today in four parts. First, we're gonna talk about what is velocity-based training and who is it good for. Second, we're gonna review the research and the science on this topic. We're gonna to talk about exactly what the science says and exactly how we should do velocity-based training to get the best results. Part three, we're gonna talk about how to use this information if we do have equipment or what equipment we should get if we wanna use this training method. And then lastly, we'll talk about how to use this training method even if we do not have equipment. So let's go ahead and dive into it and learn all about velocity-based training. So to start off, what is velocity-based training? Velocity-based training is a training technique that involves measuring velocity and using that to guide your training in some way. One way to do that is with a tendo unit. So what you'll see in this clip is a tendo unit is a device that essentially attaches a string to a barbell and then it moves up and down with the barbell. It's not adding any resistance, it's just essentially tracking the speed of that barbell. There are other bar speed tracking devices as well, but the Tendo unit is the one that I used while I was an intern strength coach with Ohio State Olympic Sports, and it's one that I've seen in a lot of different weight rooms and with professional athletes. So we'll talk about some of the common metrics that we would get from a Tendo unit or a similar device, and those could be things like mean concentric velocity, peak concentric velocity, or a number of other metrics. Often we just keep it simple when we say bar speed. A lot of times that is corresponding to mean concentric velocity or the speed of the bar through the concentric or upward phase of the lift. That value might be something like 0.2 meters per second, 0.4 meters per second, 0.7 meters per second, depending on the type of exercise that we're doing. So now that we know what velocity-based training is, who is it actually good for? This training method could be good for any athlete who's trying to build speed and power. Think field sport athletes like football, baseball, basketball, any athlete that's gonna involve jumping, change of direction, those athletes are gonna benefit from learning how to move with higher velocities and more intent to their movement on the barbell. This technique likely won't be that beneficial if you're trying to maximize hypertrophy or if you're an endurance athlete. So with that said, let's look at the research which is primarily on field sport power athletes. There have been a lot of studies done on velocity-based training, including this one, on the effects of velocity loss during resistance training on performance in professional soccer players. We're not gonna go too in-depth with this. I will link it in the description below if you guys wanna look at it more. The way this study worked is 16 professional soccer players were divided into two different resistance training protocols. They both used velocity-based training, but for one group, they went until their velocity decreased by 30%, and the other group went until their velocity only decreased by 15% with the same loads and the same high intent of maximizing bar speed. So the group that went all the way until they lost 30% of their velocity did more reps a little bit slower, whereas the group who cut off as soon as their velocity went down by 15% did fewer reps but their reps were more in high intent, but they cut it off and they didn't do those reps where they would have lost more than 15% of their velocity. So what this resulted in was the velocity loss of 15% group obtained greater gains in counter movement jump height than the velocity loss of 30 group. Simply put, it was more effective to stop your reps as soon as you hit 15% loss of velocity than it was to grind through those reps all the way down to where you were losing 30% velocity. So the overall conclusion from this research study was a velocity-based resistance training program characterized by a low degree of fatigue with 15% velocity loss in each set is effective to induce improvements in neuromuscular performance in professional soccer players with previous resistance training experience. So the emphasis is that using these higher velocity reps and cutting off your training as soon as you lose more than 15% velocity is effective at specifically building those neuromuscular gains that translate to things like vertical jump and speed production. Of course, this is just one study, so I wanna look at what's called a systematic review, which puts together many studies that are very similar in nature to this and comes to a bigger conclusion on the overall body of research. 
So this study on the effects of velocity-based training on strength and power in elite athletes, a systematic review, shows us a little bit better what we're gonna see over multiple studies on athletes and the results that this training technique provides. One thing that this study showed was, the analyzed study suggests that applying velocity losses of 10 to 20% can help induce neuromuscular adaptations and reduce neuromuscular fatigue. So what this is showing is that it's not just one study. Multiple studies are showing that loss of velocity can impact your ability to improve speed and power. By doing training where we cut off at a smaller velocity loss of 10 or 20%, we can see greater improvements in speed and power than we would see if we just keep grinding through reps. The training mistake that a lot of people make that costs them 10% or more of their speed and power is grinding through too many slow reps when they're trying to build speed and power. If that's the case, we need to use shorter sets, more intent and more bar speed. Let's look at exactly how to do this with part three with equipment and then we'll move into part four if you don't have equipment how to do this. One way to apply this information if you have a group of athletes and they're tracking their bar speed is to establish a minimum velocity threshold. This is a bar speed at which if the athlete can't perform higher than this bar speed, their set is cut off. They may do as many reps as they can until they hit that minimum velocity threshold and then they set it down, rest, and then go to the next set. If we can make this individual to the athlete, it's even better. For example, testing them on their first rep and then having them go until they're only 10% lower than that first rep. I wanna mention a couple things. This is highly variable exercise to exercise. So this may vary 0.2 for one exercise, 0 0.3, 0 0.7, 0 0.8 for different types of exercises. There's no one best minimum velocity threshold. It's individual to the individual and to the exercise. Also, this isn't something that we're gonna do with all of our reps all the time. As you can see in this video, Juju Smith-Schuster is incorporating some slower controlled movements into his workout. Most pro athletes are going to have a mix, some high velocity exercises and some slow and controlled exercises. This will change, that mixture will change is for in the preseason versus the off season. A lot of times in the off season, we're doing more hypertrophy work and some slower grinding reps. Whereas as we move into the preseason, we're doing a little bit more of this sport specific, velocity specific work to specifically build speed and power. If you guys really wanna get into this, follow people who are doing really good work. This is a graph from Bill Miller Training on Instagram. I think he does some pretty cool work with velocity based training. I've gotten into a network with guys in Vegas working with the Raiders who are doing some pretty cool stuff with velocity based training. And it's really a cool thing to get into if you guys want to dive into the data and you can get a lot of great benefits from your athletes seeing things like force and velocity deficits with different athletes by creating individual force velocity profiles. With that said though, we can still apply this principle even if we don't have equipment. The simple way to apply this principle would be to coach bar speed and coach intent. For example, we could program shorter sets. Instead of doing six reps near max with say an eight rep max or a seven rep max load, we might do six reps with a 12 rep max load and then move with higher bar speed, more intent. We also may program shorter sets, like sets of three to four with an eight rep max load. Meaning we could do eight, but we're gonna cut them off at three to four reps and really coach high intent and high bar speed. This will again preferentially shift us towards these neuromuscular speed and strength adaptations and potentially reduce some of the fatigue associated with those later reps in the set when we're grinding through a little bit slower. This is a pretty good video of Derek Henry doing some fast squats. He's actually loading this bar up heavy and it looks really impressive like he's squatting a lot of weight, but he could squat even more weight than this. He's dropping that weight a little bit and really moving with high bar speed. This is something that the Alabama football team overall has shifted towards. And what you can see in this graph is that their peak power output is actually at around 65 to 70% one rep max. And that's where they're loading a lot of their athletes, especially in the preseason. They're tracking this stuff with force plates and wattage and advanced metrics, but you can apply the same principle and just load lighter and move with high bar speed to maximize that point on the graph where you're getting the most power. So as you can see, you can use a lot of data to dictate your training, but the principle here is that moving the bar quickly specifically builds those neuromuscular adaptations of speed and strength. If you've only been doing reps where you're highly loaded, grinding and close to your rep max and not leaving any reps in the tank, you could be inhibiting your speed and strength by 10% or more. 
Try incorporating in some velocity-based training with higher bar speeds and see if it improves your results. Drop a comment below what sport you work with and if I have any articles that might be interesting to you or different videos for you to check out, I'll try to comment those to you. That way if you guys are interested in soccer specific, basketball specific, baseball specific application of this information, I can try to point you in the right direction. Also, if you guys want to learn more, you can subscribe to the Movement System Podcast. I'm probably going to do a podcast episode specifically on velocity-based training in the near future. So if you guys don't want to miss that, make sure you're subscribed. Lastly, if you're not already, go ahead and follow along on Instagram at the Movement System and TikTok if you want to as well. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and I'll catch you in the next one.